Hi, uh, this is Gershon Wolf, and welcome to Modern Music Composition, where um, we're going to continue our discussion on first species counterpoint. And today, um, we're going to create our uh, counterpoint based on the Cantus firmus, the our bass melody that we actually created in the previous uh, video, uh, video I think uh, lesson thirteen. And what I've done here is I've moved it down an octave so that I could keep things kind of on the same staff. Um, great for uh, guitarist or violinist. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, there's a lot of information here on this board. So let's, let's go through it step by step. First things first, as I mentioned, um, in First Species Counterpoint, we're going to be creating a second melody which is harmonious to our first melody, but yet that second melody is still independent, okay? So, there were rules that we uh, put down with respect to how we created our first melody. In other words, you know, the um, <clears throat> leading tone went up to the uh, tonic, and we had the uh, sixth go down to uh, the fifth, and the fourth go down to the third. If you remember, you can go back and review um, lesson 13. So, in creating our second melody, there's once again more rules. <laughs> A lot of rules in counterpoint. <clears throat> so, in particular, these are very important rules. These are motion rules. This is how we proceed across in the creation of our melody what we can and cannot do with respect to the motion of our tones. And it doesn't stop with motion. There are more rules. I wrote them up here because I was running out of room to write rules. Um, PC stands for perfect consonants and IC stands for imperfect consonants. Just to review, perfect consonances are the octaves, the unisons, and the perfect fifths. Imperfect continent consonances are thirds, both major and minor, and sixths, both major and minor. <laughs> okay, so the cool part is the motion, all right? So there are four different types of motion, contrary, similar, oblique, and parallel. You want to stay away from parallel motion as much as possible, especially parallel octaves, um, because it gives you a sense of no motion. <laughs> so let's go through these one uh, step by step, because um, there, there is a lot of information here. Okay. Contrary motion. Contrary motion is motion in opposite direction by the same interval. What does that mean? Well, that means if I'm just going to draw, let me draw it in blue. If I'm here at a D and I'm up here at another D, let's say I've written out um, an octave. Well, that's a perfect consonance. I have a choice in motion whether or not I can go to another perfect consonance. And if I do that, if I move this way in another perfect consonance, I have to move by contrary or oblique motion. Contrary motion means if this guy goes up, this guy goes down. Or, if this guy goes up, this guy goes down. Either one of those is contrary. One is moving in the opposite direction than the other. Oblique motion means motion of one melody line while the other one remains the same. So this guy could remain the same and this fellow could either go up or down depending upon where you want it to go you know, with that, with that tone row. Similar motion means I don't have to follow the same interval for both of those. In other words, in contrary motion, if I go down two semitones, I got to go up two semitones. Or if I go down a second, I got to go up a second. Um, here I could go down a second and then up here, I'm sorry, um, similar motion would be going down a second here and then maybe going down a third here. So it's almost kind of like a little bit of a roller coaster down uh, with, the, with differences in the slopes. 
That's how I look at it. <clears throat> so, I'm not going to go through all this stuff right now. It doesn't mean anything until we actually do it. And then we can use this chart to progress across and create our, our counterpoint, our second melody. Um, these, this IC is imperfect consonants and then C, O, and S, or C, O, and, and S over here. Um, let's do it. So, like I said, there's a lot of rules in, in counterpoint. One of the first rules is that you can start on a unison or you can start on an octave. Um, I'm going to go ahead, actually let's do it in blue so that we can kind of do a different color than red, which would be blue. Okay, so if we're C here, we're going to go up here to C. Okay, so I've created now a perfect consonance. I can either go to another perfect consonance or an imperfect consonance. Well, if I go to B, here I am, I'm sorry, here I am at D. An another rule of counterpoint. Contrary motion is preferred over any other type of motion. So, if at all possible, you want to stay in contrary motion, whether or not it's in, like this or, or like this. <laughs> okay, so if this is the case, then what I'll do is I'll take this down to a B. Okay, so now I have D and B. I've now created a, uh, I've got a sixth here. So now I've got an imperfect consonance. I can either go back to a perfect consonance. If, if I do that, I've got to do it in contrary or oblique motion or if I just take it to another imperfect consonance, I got a lot more freedom. I could do contrary, similar, or oblique. Well, what do I want to do? I think I'm going to take it up to a D. That way we've gone contrary here and contrary here. So we've gone from D down to B and B up to D. I'm back at a perfect consonance at the octave. Um, now I've got another C. Well, what to do? Hope this isn't boring, but I'm just going to write another C and create um, another octave. It's not good to have two octaves in a row, but because I'm going in contrary motion, it's not such a bad thing. If they were parallel octaves, going either this way or this way, that would be a lot more tough on the, the counterpoint, and that would be something you want to avoid. Okay, well, here I am back at D, and so I've got a choice between going to perfect consonants or an imperfect consonants. Um, I'm going to go to an imperfect consonants and hit it up with a D to a B. My next is an F, so I'm at imperfect consonants. If I want to go to, and here I'm going in this direction from D to F, I'm going to take that B down to a C. So here I went um, from D to F, and here I went from, from B to, to C. Do I want to do that? Motion C. F. Yeah, I think I'll do that. Um, the next thing I want to do is, so here I am now at, at F and A. That's an imperfect constant. That's a, that's a third. And I want to go to, what do I want to do? You know what? I'm going to keep this in similar motion, and I'm just going to go straight across and keep this in A. Now I've got E to A. Okay, so that's a perfect fourth or a perfect fifth. Now here's the deal with, with that. I'm, I'm kind of going through this, uh, as you can see, um, a step at a time. <laughs> um, used to be a perfect fourth was 
considered, um, uh, well, okay. So remember the circle of fifths, okay? If you take it clockwise, you do per perfect fifths. If you take it counterclockwise, you do perfect fourths. We're gonna include a perfect fourth in as a consonance, okay? And um, it used to be thought as a, a dissonance, but a lot of, some of this stuff is, is subjective. So we're gonna treat the perfect fourth as a consonance. And so this is a cool move. It, it's, it's, it's good, 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 good to go. <laughs> All right, so here we are at D. Um, I think I'm going to stay contrary motion and hit this up to a B. So this goes down and that goes up. Back to C. I'm going to stay in contrary motion and hit this back up to a C. So we're back to an octave. And then I'm going to take it into, I'm going to come back down into similar motion. Okay. I'm going to use an A there, but see what I've done here is I've done now parallel. I've got parallel motion here in my octaves. You don't want to do more than two. Okay. Some of this stuff can get pretty rugged. <laughs> um, but, but, um, Let's let this one go and, and, and let's, let's get on to the next step. So here we are at G. Um, G, I want to, um, I don't want to do a G. So I got my perfect, I want to go to perfect to instant, go to, I'm going to do similar motion. If I take this to, if I take G to an F, that's dissonant. I'm going to take, and I don't want to take it to another G, because if I do that, that's another octave. I'm going to take it to an E. Remember, thirds are fine. Remember, in, in lesson 13, going by, by these leaps are fine, too. So um, taking this leap is well and good. <laughs> okay, so now where do I want to go? Um, I'm going to keep it in... A, so here I am, imperfect, um, G to E. I've got a chance to do an oblique motion. Now I'm going to keep it oblique. So this stays across and this goes up. And then C, we're just going to end it at C like that. Whew. <laughs> okay. There's our counterpoint. This is now first species counterpoint where, okay, all of these are in consonant. And this by itself is its own freestanding melody. The red is its own freestanding melody. And together... They're harmonious, okay? It's like good neighbors. <laughs> All right, so here's what you can do also, is that you can take this, and you can start filling in chords, if you like. Start fooling around with it, put some inversions in. Um, spice it up. See, what, see where you can go with that. But start with one melody, with the rules that we um, gave in Lesson 13, Create your counterpoint. Make sure that you follow these motions and these rules for the most part. Okay, this stuff isn't like set in stone. Sometimes the rules can be broken and you can, you know, veer this way and veer that way. That's what this is all about. Um, you don't want it to be too rigid. You want to know what's perfect and what's imperfect. Um, per, you know, put the perfect fourth. I'm going to put the perfect fourth there. Some people put it here. Um, okay, so that's a lot of information. And that's first species counterpoint. Um, we're going to move on to second species counterpoint. That'll be next. So thank you very much, and we'll see you later.